Good morning, Concord Baptists. Welcome to our virtual Sunday school class for July 19th. Question, what do uh, Joseph, uh, Moses, Nehemiah, Daniel, and John the Baptist have in common? Well, if you said they were all uh, politically active in their day, you're right. Uh, of course, Joseph, um, being hated by his brothers, sold into captivity, ended up becoming the uh, second in uh, command in the government of Egypt of his day, the ruling power used by God to help distribute and feed the world in his day because of the great famine. So Joseph, certainly politically active. Uh, Moses, directed by God to uh, go to the ruler uh, of his day, Pharaoh, and uh, demand that he release the children of Israel because of the oppression that uh, Pharaoh was mistreating the people of God oppressing them beyond measure and they cried out to God and God uh, delivered them through uh, Moses. Uh, Moses himself being their leader, ruler, um, taking them out of the land of Egypt, um, being used by God to uh, give them the law. Uh, and so very uh, politically active and in guiding the everyday life of, of a whole nation. Um, Daniel, um, taken into captivity, also got involved in the political process from a very young age till very up into his 90s, uh, from Nebuchadnezzar all the way up through the rule of Cyrus, uh, the Persian, giving counsel to the leaders of his day, directing uh, all kinds of activities um, for uh, government officials in his day. So very politically active. Nehemiah uh, serving uh, in the, under the uh, ruler of his day, um, also very politically active, became the ruler uh, led by God to go to back to the land of Israel after the captivity and governing, being a governor uh, over the children of Israel, but also involved in the politics of, uh, of the Medo-Persian Empire. So Nehemiah, very politically active. Um, but John the Baptist, uh, we don't normally think of him as being politically active, but he certainly was. Remember, the reason he was thrown into prison is because he uh, opposed uh, Herod, the uh, ruler of his in his day. Um, remember, Herod had taken his brother Philip's wife, and so John the Baptist spoke against that. He said, "You, you should not have taken your brother's wife." And as a result, he was thrown into prison and eventually beheaded because of his uh, opposition to the. Uh, political ruler of his day. So all throughout scripture, these aren't the only ones, of course, but many people throughout scripture were involved in the, their political uh, movements of their day. Uh, and what an appropriate lesson here in uh, um, July 19th in your Bible studies for life. What uh, or how should we respond to our political environment? And with the election coming up in November, uh, it can be pretty depressing. For, for some of us, we think, well, maybe we should just go off and start our own political movement. Uh, others uh, would say we need to rise up and, and, uh, and fight, um, actually go to war uh, against uh, this um, current political uh, situation. And so you've, you've got the whole spectrum um, out there. 
but what should I, what should be our um, relationship? How do we interact as a believer with uh, our political leaders of the day? You might be tempted to think, well, Paul and and other writers of scripture had it uh, uh, had it easier. But if you know anything about the political environment of their their day, um, it's almost like reading the headlines of our day. There was sexual exploitation, slavery everywhere, um, political corruption. Remember, uh, Nero blamed uh, many things on the Christians and the Jews and uh, would use them uh, and punish them for things that uh, he, they didn't do. Um, Paul himself uh, was um, put to death by Nero. Peter also uh, put to death during his reign. And so they did not live in a, an environment that was politically friendly to the Christian uh, belief system. We, in America here, we're really blessed to, to have the freedoms that we have. But in uh, Jesus's day, even, there was the whole spectrum as well. There were those zealots who said, let's take up arms against the Romans and throw, overthrow them. Um, and then you had other groups that were cloistered together and kind of went off on their own, just had their own little Bible group and kind of were stayed away and separated from everyone in society. Uh, and then you had those uh, others who uh, tried to carry out their lives in a way that was pleasing to God in the current environment. And uh, so here, if you'll take your Bibles and turn to Romans chapter 13, we'll take a look and see what Paul had to say about how we should interact with uh, our political and our political situation. Um, so in Romans 13, it says, let everyone submit to the governing authorities since there is no authority except from God and the authorities that exist are instituted by God. So then the one who resists the authority is opposing God's command and those who oppose it will bring judgment on themselves. Why? For leaders, rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad. Do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Do what is good, and you will have its approval. For it is God's, he, it is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, because it does not carry the sword for no reason. For it is God's servant an avenger that brings wrath on the one who does wrong. So here we see Paul says, we should respond to government with obedience. It says, be submit to the governing authorities. Now here in the book of Romans, you would think, wow, this is completely off subject from what we've been, uh, what you've been reading in the book of Romans. You have all those beginning chapters where we need we need to be back in right relationship with God. And how do we get back to that right relationship? Uh, we're in sin. And so we need uh, a righteousness from God. And so that righteousness is, supp is supplied to us through Jesus Christ. Um, we are given his righteousness. It's a gift. Uh, salvation is given as a gift to God. And we, we are made right with him through belief and trust in Christ. Who took our punishment for our sin. Um, and so the first chapters in Romans are loaded with good doctrine concerning our need for salvation and how it was supplied. Then uh, in Romans 12, we, we get the application of how do we then um, take that salvation? Uh, how do we act? What is our relationship then with God? And, and Paul says we need to present ourselves as a living sacrifice to God. And then also in Romans 12, how do we interact with other believers? Um, 
we are we are to um, respond, uh, treat our neighbor in love and and uh, honor, respect, um, and then also he takes up how do we interact with uh, unbelievers, and uh, we are to uh, uh, respond in a way. Uh, if your enemy hungers, feed him. Uh, if he thirsts, give him to drink. Uh, bless those who curse you. Bless and curse not. And so Romans 12 is loaded with uh, how then do we take this salvation that we're given and put it into practice um, in our relationship with God, with other believers, or with uh, those who are neighbors. And now here in Romans 12, how do we enter it? How do we live as believers uh, in the political environment that we find ourselves in? And so the first thing he says, you need, you need to submit to those in authority. Why? Because those in authority are there because of God's uh, um, choice, because of what God has done. He has put them into their positions and so that that's a pretty pretty outstanding statement when you think of um, the rulers such as uh, in north korea uh, in japan russia china uh, europe and here even here in america god is the one who's put them in authority there's no no person in authority that can get there except by God allowing it. So when you oppose that person, Paul says you are opposing God's authority. Uh, he put them into a position of leadership. Now, the resisting there is... Um, the idea is host hostile opposition to and getting in uh, someone's face to the point of being hostile towards them. Um, when you do that to the ruling authorities, Paul says, you are in opposition to God. And so we're not talking about um, peaceful um, protests. We're not talking about speaking out against immoral behavior, against unjust laws. So the resisting here is taking, uh, in some cases it would be the ultimate extreme, would be taking up arms against the ruling authorities. Um, but it isn't necessarily that, it's, it's in your heart being of, um, violently opposed uh, and in opposition to the uh, to the root laws and in seeking to um, disobey and do everything you can against uh, those in authority, speaking against them. Uh, but um, Sorry for that uh, interruption. I had to. My neighbor needed uh, some help. Let's see, where were we? We're... The resistance here, I think, was uh, a harsh, violent, um, personal hostility and not the uh, kind of resistance that we're talking about when we're doing a protest um, or speaking out against some evil in our society. Because um, we see this all, all throughout the scriptures. Um, you see Elijah uh, in, uh, remember in 1 Kings chapter 18, uh, Ahab was one of the wickedest kings in the northern uh, Israel. And uh, Elijah was ministering uh, in his kingdom. And remember, for uh, many years, Elijah had um, 
predicted and, br and the Lord brought on three and a half years of drought because of the idolatry and sin in, in, in the northern kingdom. And so he meets uh, Ahab. Here's what he says. So, it's, um, and Elijah answered, um, because Ahab had said to Elijah, you're the one who's troubling Israel. And Elijah answers, I have not troubled Israel, but you and your father's house have, in that you have forsaken the commandment of the Lord and have followed the Baals. Now, therefore, send and gather all Israel to me on Mount Carmel, the 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Asherah, who eat at Jezebel's table. And so he calls uh, on Ahab to meet him on Mount Carmel, but he calls him out here and says, listen, you, you're troubling Israel because of all the uh, idolatry that you're promoting uh, in uh, Israel. So meet me on Carmel and um, we will see who the true and living God is. And remember the great victory that God uh, gives there. And they uh, destroy all the prophets, 450 prophets of Baal. So Elijah um, often dealt with political leaders uh, from other countries even. that would go. So he was not afraid to... Um, to deal with and get involved in uh, the politics of other countries, leaders, uh, and military leaders. Um, often the prophets uh, would do that. It makes sense because we read in the Shrug, as you read through the Psalms, um, you run across the phrase again and again that God is a God of justice. Look, just for one example, look at Psalm 10 and uh, verse 18. Well, beginning verse 17, Lord, you have heard the desire of the humble. You will prepare their heart. You will cause your ear, meaning the Lord's ear to hear, and it will be the Lord to do justice to the fatherless and the oppressed that the man of the earth may oppress no more. So God is definitely involved and desires justice and mercy, especially of his leaders there in Israel. He expected them to do justice. And the ones who ran the court systems were his representatives to do justice and righteousness, to uh, look out for the oppressed. And this, often the uh, word stranger is uh, accompanied in those contexts. Uh, so not just their own people, but also those outside, the uh, Gentiles, they were to um, minister to them as well. Because he says, remember, you were strangers in the land of Egypt for 400 years. And uh, so you are to take care and um, minister to the needs of the oppressed and to the stranger and to their needs. Um, Look, Isaiah chapter uh, 1, and uh, look at verse 17. Um, Isaiah 1, 17. Uh, it says, learn to do good, seek justice, rebuke the oppressor, defend the fatherless, plead for the widow. So... And so here the word uh, to rebuke, okay, this means to speak out against the oppressors. Uh, in our society, there are certain uh, people, groups that are being oppressed, that are being singled out for uh, unlawful and unjust treatment. Uh, if you were here when Pastor Willie uh, uh, when we were doing the Wednesday night uh, Bible studies, he came once, and his testimony is he, even in uh, even in our own area, he has been uh, unjustly pulled over for no reason. He, here's a pastor, just mind uh, you know obeying the law, driving, and then he stopped for no reason, um, and uh, interrogated by by the law uh, the law, and. Uh, 
So it's not, it's, it's not uncommon uh, here in Farmville either. He, even on the campus Longwood, uh, my wife has uh, encountered many incidents uh, um, examples of being uh, oppressed and uh, singled out for unjust treatment uh, here in Farmville. And so we need, as the people of God, uh, we are not to have that hostility where we want to overthrow. Uh, we could certainly pray that uh, new leaders are brought in who uh, are just and will be involved uh, in making just laws. Perhaps even some of you, I know recently some in our church have uh, run for uh, the school board. Um, so we need uh, believers in these positions. We need Joseph's and Moses's and Nehemiah's. And, I mean, he wasn't, Nehemiah wasn't any, uh, didn't have any outstanding, I mean, he was a, had some good leadership qualities but he was he took care of the king's tasting wine testing but he was willing to be used by God to uh, become a leader to get involved in the uh, uh, government of Israel and intervene uh, and minister in the uh, ungodly uh, Medo-Persian government as well and so we need a press God will use uh, some of you or you, some of your children, encouraging them to get involved in, uh, in, in uh, leadership positions to make and carry out just laws. We can't just sit back and complain. We, we need to do, use our, exercise our uh, God-given rights that we have or we uh, stand in a position to lose them. And so as believers, um, we're not to have that hostility, but we are to speak out against it. I think we do this as a church when uh, doing the marches uh, to uh, curb abortion. Uh, doing walks for life is a way of, <clears throat> of uh, speaking out against the atrocities of abortion. Uh, and there are other ways, the uh, uh, Black Lives Matter. It, not sure how, how you stand on that, but I would see no reason why you, you couldn't peacefully speak out. Um, perhaps that will open doors uh, to a minister. And so Israel was to do this. They were to minister to uh, even their enemies, to the uh, Samaritans, to strangers. And as a result, that would lead to opportunities to uh, tell them about the creator God uh, and present the gospel in our case. And so we see Paul doing that throughout his ministry. He often used his position as a Roman citizen to, uh, to uh, um, help him out in the, in the legal system. Um, and remember once he was going to get beaten, but he said, Hey, listen, I'm a, is it lawful for you to be a Roman citizen? So he, he, all through the book of Acts, as you read through there, he uses his Roman citizenship uh, to, to stop uh, unjust uh, treatment, to be unjustly treated. And so he, he had the ability to appeal to Caesar so that he wouldn't be uh, put under the mistreatment and, and, and the unjust judgment of the Jewish council. And so that's how he ended up in Rome. Uh, but he spoke up and was willing to speak to rulers and speak to them about the kingdom of God and righteousness, behavior, justice, and doing what was right um, and, and just. So all prophets of God, uh, leaders, uh, just ordinary people doing their everyday jobs, God used to speak out and uh, get involved in the political process of their day uh, to open doors uh, for God's kingdom. And that's the main thing. Um, just speaking out against behavior and getting involved in um, peaceful demonstrations um, 
is of no value if it's not coupled with the opportunities to present people with the um, all just person, the Lord Jesus Christ, who um, will one day set up his kingdom uh, where righteousness and justice will reign. But we are to be um, those instruments of righteousness and justice in our society. And here Paul says, you don't have that hostile um, hostility in your heart where you want to overthrow and, and speak ill of. And, and oftentimes it, uh, when people are interviewed, uh, when the news interviews people uh, from churches and things, they often say things that they regret later because it comes across as mean-spirited and hostile. We need to speak the truth in love. And uh, that's not always easy to do. But um, Paul says here, don't, uh, don't be surprised if you end up in uh, jail or get punished if you resist or have that hostility um, of wanting to overthrow, wanting to uh, um, speak ill of um, those in rulership over, because they were put there by God. Uh, and they are there to um, to help those uh, do good, uh, to reward them, and to uh, punish the evil. So we should be afraid, he says here, to do evil. And, uh, and God, God will uh, help us in those situations where we are unjustly treated uh, by those in, in, in rule, as, as, as Paul was. Um, was unjustly treated, but God uh, used him to open the doors of the gospel to the Gentile world and to the um, government halls in Rome because of his willingness to speak out for God. Um, notice the word he uses here uh, in verse 4. He says, uh, do, if you do wrong, be afraid because uh, government, uh, the rulers do not carry the sword for any re no reason, for he is God's servant. Uh, the word there is the same word as we use for deacon. Uh, he's God's deacon, uh, the avenger that brings wrath on the one who does wrong. Uh, and so I know those, uh, those out there that uh, think that paying taxes that are used to kill babies and, and, and make unjust uh, rulings, that they, they have a right not to pay taxes. But here, uh, they are God's servant um, to bring wrath on those who do wrong. And he, and he brings out um, in the next verses, look at verse five, therefore you must submit not only because of wrath, but also because of your conscience. And for this reason, you pay taxes, since the authorities are God's servants continually attending to do these tasks. Pay your obligations to everyone. Taxes to those who you owe taxes. Tolls to those you owe tolls. Respect to those who owe respect. And honor to those who owe honor. And so he connects the obedience here to uh, not a very popular topic, pay your taxes. And so being hostile and saying, I'm not uh, going to do this, can, uh, Paul says, don't, don't uh, be surprised if you end up being uh, on the punishment end. Um, I have a, a person that I uh, got uh, to um, know in the creation movement, and he had a ministry down in Florida, but he, he got it in his head that he didn't need to pay his workers, didn't need to pay the, uh, employ the certain employment taxes. And so he fought with the IRS for years and they said, no, you need, you need to pay these taxes, but he wouldn't, wouldn't do it. Um, and uh, finally he was getting ready to do a ministry overseas and he had a good ministry. He's great, was great with young people and uh, had a great message but he got it in his head that he didn't need to deal with these, this tax situation. 
And so, well, he was getting ready to go overseas to do a, a, a series of meetings. Um, they, uh, they came and uh, locked him up, put him, in, put him in prison for years, for several years, I believe because of uh, tax evasion. And um, so Paul says here, pay your taxes. It doesn't say pay your taxes if they're used for things that you approve of. Uh, in Paul's day, um, even in Jesus' day, he told uh, the member of the rulers came to the Pharisees came to him and says, uh, should we pay our taxes? And he said, well, bring, bring me a coin. Well, whose who's image is on there? That's Caesar's. Well, give the Caesar the things that are Caesar's, to God's the things that are God's. And uh, so we, we need to do what we can to uh, vote for leaders who are going to promote uh, good use of our tax dollars. But there's no provision in these verses or anywhere that I know of in scripture. You may know of one and you can tell me later that one maybe I've glossed over. But uh, I see no loophole here to say, well, you, you don't need to pay your taxes because they're being used for uh, things that you don't approve of scripturally. Um, so we are to put those into, into God's hands and do what we can to make changes, but it's not our, it's not our part to uh, rebel in that way by saying, well, I'm not going to, we can, uh, we can voice our disapproval of how those tax dollars are being used, certainly. Uh, that's our right. Uh, but getting to the point of hostility and throwing off those laws and saying they don't apply to me. And we all do that with different laws. Maybe it's not taxes, but with myself, sometimes I, um, not that I do it now, for those who, <laughs> no, I'm, but, um, you, there's certain speed limits around the county uh, or in the city where we think, man, this is a four lane highway and they want me to go 30, uh, 35 miles an hour. Uh, there's nobody, I mean, nobody, there's not that much traffic on this road. It ought to be 45 or 50. So I'm going to go 40. And I can't say that I haven't done that. But this scripture clearly says, uh, obey those um, laws, uh, respect uh, the laws that are over you and those who are put in authority over you. Okay, so that's not just the kings and uh, governors, but it's also our local authorities. And so that's, that's a local law, that's a federal law, in some cases on, federal, on uh, state highways, and so we are to be in subjection, to submit to those laws. Um, we can certainly, again, you, you can appeal to authority that, listen, the, the, uh, you, need to do a, the, you need to do a study or do something that this is really needs to, the speed limit needs to be increased here or decreased in some cases. But we can't just decide, well, I'm going to make up my own. Uh, and um, you may have never done this, but I, I know in my heart I, or my mind, I've done what I know better than the authorities, what is a good, safe limit, the speed to drive. And, but when I look at this scripture, uh, God uh, says, no, no, John, you, you are to submit uh, to this uh, authority. Uh, whether you agree with it or not. Uh, so pay your taxes, tolls, and uh, and in some cases you can avoid those. Like I've now I'm going to the airport, I, I started avoiding, they went up to like $5 for that little, you go three miles on that little stretch of eight ninety five to get from 150 to the airport. And I, to me, that's just outrageous to pay. Uh, five dollars each way to uh to get to the airport just a few minutes uh, faster and so i now go up 95 to 64 and cut over so there are ways to not pay the tolls but uh paul says here 
pay what you what to do and uh, respect those who have a position of respect and honor those who have a position of honor so that person that you're dealing with in the uh, that's an authority over you may not personally uh, be very respectful to you or you don't think they deserve um, that respect but Paul says respect that position give the honor and uh, let God take care of uh, how they treat you uh, leave in his hands so not only obey because of uh, of the judgment that will come he says here but why else look verse 5 but also because of conscience that that voice in you that says listen you uh, you're not you, your heart is really in rebellion against this law and you need to bring yourself under um, uh, under its rule because uh, when you are uh, even though you may hide it a little bit that rebellion against authority will uh, show up and your children will pick up are they uh, sad to say they they're good at picking up our um, inconsistencies and uh, the things that we do and our attitudes towards authority and so paul says don't just be afraid of wrath um, but also uh, for a conscience sake to, to have a clear conscience and, and to have the freedom and the blessing of God uh, in your life. So these obligations, uh, these taxes and tolls are, are ways that God has designed for government to do, take care, to give us the roads, to, to take care of uh, the law, our, uh, ju our judicial system, and uh, to protect. And so... You may be like me, and you need a little uh, attitude check, so to speak. Uh, these verses don't give a lot of uh, leeway in, in this uh, regard. So they are God's servants. They are God's deacons to uh, minister uh, for him. So give them the respect uh, and honor that's due them. And so use your... Use your um, rights and privileges to criticize and uh, write letters to peacefully demonstrate a constructive criticism uh, being the key word there. Um, just criticizing uh, because you don't like something and not giving uh, some alternative um, doesn't do much good. We see even in, remember with Daniel, uh, was being told you've got to eat these uh, uh, foods uh, because this is the king wants you to uh, eat these and uh, we're going to change your diet we're going to change uh, your the things you know and learn uh, your language uh, but when it came to uh, these foods Daniel said I'm not going to defile myself uh, with these but he didn't go to the uh, person over him in authority. He didn't say, "Listen, uh, I don't want this slop, and you, you're not going to, you're not going to make me eat it." No, that's not what he did. He said he requested from the person in authority, "Say, listen, put a give a test here, and uh, let me eat these foods. And if after ten days uh, I'm not in better health than anybody else, then you do what you need to do." I, I don't think he would have eaten them. He would have taken the punishment. But uh, he said, listen, I, I, I don't think uh, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not allowed, uh, my conscience won't allow me to eat these things. But here's, here's something, this will accomplish what you want done. You want me to be in good health, right? So this, it's going to accomplish uh, what you want but it's going to be in a way that I can please God. And so they were willing to do that. And as a result, God blessed Daniel. And he was, what it says, they were 10 times, meaning they way outperformed and outdid their colleagues in there. And so 
respectfully criticize, but give uh, give give a, a, um, a series of steps that can be taken to uh, alleviate or to uh, accomplish what they want to do in a in a way that uh, you you can uh, please God as well, and that's what Daniel did. Now, I would ask for questions, but uh, maybe next time we can do, uh, if you'll uh, be willing to get on Zoom, uh, we can do an interactive. Uh, this is kind of one way here. You gotta, you just listen to me the whole time. It's, uh, I appreciate, but uh, I, uh, I like hearing from you as well. Uh, but next time, maybe we can do a lesson uh, on Zoom where you can actually enter interact with one another and with me and uh, because I don't have all the answers I haven't thought about all the different avenues um, and as the body of Christ we can uh, uh, encourage and teach one another um, and which is a good thing but follow um, these guidelines and uh, Paul says in general now they don't always depending on uh, in Paul's case he eventually was uh, killed by Nero uh, Peter was crucified uh, but in their lives God accomplished his purpose God can accomplish his purposes through you in you being obedient and paying your taxes and uh, and respecting in uh, giving honor to those who are in authority over you. Um, now he, he uh, goes on to say, look at, uh, look at verses 8 through 10. Do not owe anyone anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not covet, and any other commandment is summed up by this commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. And so we can fulfill God's law in all these ways by operating from the platform of love. Do unto others as you want them to do to you. How do you want to be spoken to? How do you want to be? And so this law, this biblical love is proactive. It's not... Uh, the world system is is don't do unto to others what you don't want done to you. Well, that's kind of the negative. Uh, you don't have to do anything. Um, you just don't do certain things. I don't. Uh, but here the scripture says um, we are to do, do unto others as we would have them do unto us. And so we are to be proactive in the sense. But before anybody even does any good, before the authority does any good to us, we are to do good uh, and treat the authority in a way that we ourselves want to be treated. Now, that doesn't guarantee that we'll be treated in the right way. Um, but uh, it is God's way here of dealing with political authority. Treat them, speak of them, do things in a way um, that you want to be. Spoken to. So that means sometimes we need to be spoken to in a way, say, hey, listen, you're out of line here. And you need, here's, you need to do this and this to, uh, to take care of that. And so it doesn't dismiss a correction and admonition and speaking out against things, but it does speak of uh, treating people out of love and not out of hostility. Um, and so love your neighbor as yourself. And so how, 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 is, how do you treat yourself? Well, you, you uh, put yourself pretty high up there, most of us do. And so put, your, uh, put others, be proactive in treating them that way before they, no matter how, how they have treated you, which is not easy to do. I, I mean, that's not, uh, we're naturally inclined uh, to retaliate and to speak it they speak ill of us to say well we don't need to listen to them because they don't they don't have any good anything good to say anyway now that that's not how 
the scripture wants us to interact with political authority. Um, so just like love does no wrong to his neighbor, yeah, therefore you're fulfilling God's law when you act and respond out of law um, in, in God's economy. So um, love should guide our relationships with other people, with the stranger, and here clearly in this context in dealing with government authorities, with school boards, with the policemen, with the mayor, with the governor, with our uh, political, pre with our president and the senators and representatives. Um, so our words and actions need to demonstrate that uh, we respect uh, and uh, are coming from a position of love and not out of harsh, uh, insensitive uh, hostility. And so, but being civil in our speech, uh, I've not always done that. Maybe you have, but wow, it's hard when, when, when dealing with certain government um, administrations and city um, ordinances and things, it's hard sometimes to, to, to um, be, un, be submissive, but we can do it. With God's help, we can uh, speak in a civil Christian way um, that brings glory to God and that will bring out um, God's, that will help accomplish God's purposes for our, for our city, for our county, and for our country. Um, so wow, what, what a passage of scripture. The, our president all the way down to the mayor uh, and those on the school board, um, God has put in authority uh, for, um, for us. They are ministers. And so we should do everything we can as believers to interact in a way out of love and that brings glory to God's kingdom and promotes a civil discourse and action. And so let let those principles uh, be your guide uh, in whatever you do. If you decide to get involved in a, one of the local protests, make sure you do it in a way that's respectful and uh, of other people, of those in authority, but gets across to what you're trying to say. Um, and I think we try to do that uh, as a church and uh, we need to do that as God's people promote that um, discourse that will bring about good change uh, for those around us. And through that, God can open doors um, to present the gospel. Remember, that's the ultimate goal. We aren't to do this just so we can um, live, uh, we wanna live peaceful, quiet lives, but the ultimate, our ultimate goal is to have a platform to present uh, the gospel uh, that will change people's hearts because until their hearts are changed we can we can protest abortion and mistreatment injustice against people groups but um, it's the gospel that is going to change their hearts so that they will treat these other people groups in a way that's pleasing to God and so open our hearts to these people who are being oppressed and pray that it will open uh, doors to people to be brought into his kingdom here in Buckingham County and Farmville, uh, in whatever community you uh, live in. Well, I hope that um, is beneficial for you. Uh, not an easy passage, and uh, certainly one that's like a minefield, and you may have strong feelings one way or the other, but. Um, Disagree in a way that's uh, civil and that uh, promotes good dialogue and uh, through it, God can be glorified. Uh, have a blessed day and uh, we're all praying that um, for those who are looking for uh, and trying to create a vaccine uh, for this uh, virus, 
and just pray that uh, that will come about soon. Uh, God bless you.